On the build show today, we're gonna to talk about some standard stick framed assemblies that can go really high on the insulation and the performance factor. On my last video, I showed you some two by four assemblies that would meet or exceed code, but today we're going really high performance. Today's build show, all about high performance assemblies. Let's get going. Okay guys, so the genesis of this video was me walking a standard production builder job site that had this, a terrible way to build a house. Cardboard sheathing, and it got me thinking, you know, we can build a much better house by just changing a few components. And if you watched the last video, I talked about five framing assemblies and what their R values were of the whole wall, the effective R value, and really how to use basically two by four standard framing, but really taking it to a much higher level. Now in today's video though, we're gonna even go to the next degree. We're basically gonna get close to doubling what code requirements are for insulation. Let's talk about our first assembly. So if you were watching the last video, I did one through five, I'm gonna show you six through 10 now on some standard framing. So this assembly right here, we're gonna step it up to two by six framing, and we're gonna use some zip R sheathing on the outside. Now, if you're looking at your table of values, insulation values necessary, this is now an assembly that's really gonna work in every climate zone in America. And what I like about this assembly is it's still basically standard framing with standard sheathing on the outside, nothing different when the siding contractor shows up. All right, now if we're gonna meet code and we're gonna frame with two by six walls, all we need to do is go to zip R6 and now we're gonna meet code all the way up to Alaska and have a pretty darn good assembly. As I've mentioned before, one of the things I really like about zip system sheathing is not only we're gonna get a good water barrier, but we can get a really tight blower door score and not just meet code, but far exceed it. And that's what I like about this assembly is there's not a whole lot of crazy things going on here. Standard framing, really standard insulation, but we've got really high performance. Now let's look at the lowest assembly on this. If we would have used zip R3 on there with two by six walls, that means that we can use Rockwell R23 bat insulation in the cavities. With that, the effective R value of the wall is an R22. That's really good, guys. And again, that will meet code uh, in most places until we get up to climate zone six or seven. And then by code, we're gonna have to go to that R6. Now, of course, bigger is always better when it comes to R value. And your chance to do this is while the house is under construction. So. Let's look at some other assemblies. Oh, I forgot to mention though, let's talk about price per square foot. So on the wall square footage, not including all the accessories, not including your windows, that sort of thing, just for framing, uh, the zip system sheathing, which is R3, and the insulation, which in this case is that Rockwell R23 bat, I'm calculating this as $3.62 per wall square foot. Okay, next assembly, I'm gonna call this assembly number seven. Now we're gonna step it up to some even better and possibly some slightly more expensive materials. In this case, we're gonna frame this with two by sixes, but now we're gonna to go to a standard plywood on the outside, and then we're gonna put a Delta Vent SA. This is a vapor permeable house wrap that has some great accessories like some really high performance tape so we can tape where the house wrap meets the foundation. And then we're gonna use rock wool on the outside as well. There's a lot of places where this would be a preferred assembly. If you're really in a cold climate, I like this assembly because now I've got a sweater on the outside of my building. I've put that rock wool comfort board on the outside to keep my framing really warm. And I've got standard plywood, which is always a good thing. And I've got Delta Vent SA, which is a vapor permeable peel and stick house wrap on the outside. So if you're in Canada, if you're in a northern climate zone in America, this is a really nice assembly. Now this assembly though will work in a uh, southern climate as well. In fact, I built a house with basically this exact same assembly here in Austin, Texas for a very smart homeowner of mine that wanted these materials on his house. And I gotta say, I really like this assembly. 
Let's take a look at the numbers on this assembly. So two by six with plywood, Delta Van SA and rock wool. We're talking about $5.82 per square foot. This is a little bit more than our last assembly. It's about 60% uh, more expensive. Our effective R value is R25. But what isn't quite shown there is that this assembly with that real plywood means I've got a little extra hydric buffer capacity. That's a nerdy way of saying I've got a little bit more real wood that could soak up some moisture if we had a problem. Let's say we had a hose bib that leaked or some other issue. And it's also going to be able to absorb a little bit of moisture that might be moving through our wall assembly and then give that off over time. This is a more expensive, but certainly a very nice assembly. That's why I'm calling it number seven on my list. Okay, now let's step up to number eight on my list. And I'm doing this in uh, order of effective R value, not necessarily uh, expense. Now we're going back to two by four studs here. And then we're gonna use zip system sheathing, just standard sheathing right on the studs. And then we're gonna put an even thicker blanket of exterior insulation. Now on this one, I made it with Atlas Energy Shield, and this is actually the exact same assembly I did on my house. So I've got two inch poly ISO uh, with a foil facer on the outside. Then on the inside, I'm gonna put Rockwell R15 bats. So that assembly is actually an R27 effective R value of that wall. And here's what I like on it. It's a little bit less expensive. We're, we're talking about $4.05 per square foot for this assembly. And remember, this would work in all climate zones and meet and actually exceed code even up in that climate zone six or seven. That's that Alaska Canada band. Now, depending on where you are in the country, though, you may decide uh, what type of exterior insulation. I'm in the hot, humid south and I wanted that radiant barrier for my house. I also wanted the thickest amount of R value without exceeding two inches on the outside. When we go to thicker exterior insulation beyond two inches, we end up needing thicker, or pardon me, longer screws. And those long screws when we're installing our rain screen battens can get expensive. So if you can stay in the inch and a half range, you're gonna be able to use typically a standard four inch screw to put your battens on. Two inch means you're gonna jump up to a slightly more expensive screw, but in my case, I wanted to go two inch and I like the foil facing. Now, if you're in the north, however, I would recommend not doing a foil face poly ISO because now I've got a vapor barrier on the outside and I wanna be able to dry through my assembly. That's the big advantage of Rockwold's comfort board on the outside. It's a vapor permeable insulation which you're gonna be able to dry through. So if you're in a northern climate, That'd be my recommendation would be to go to Rockwell. And another or two other big advantages of Rockwell on the outside, fire resistance, you know, it's not gonna uh, be able to burn uh, much higher fire rating than polyiso, which is a, um, a spray foam polymer, which will ignite. So if you're in California, if you're in a wildfire zone, if you're building on some urban interface where you've got some issues with fire, I would highly recommend rock wool on the outside of your house. It's gonna get you some extra fire resistance. And lastly, the other thing I like about rock wool is bugs will not, will not tunnel through it. Um, their exoskeletons actually get torn apart as they try and tunnel through the rock wool. So you won't see bugs nesting in it. On the other hand, poly iso is definitely gonna have the ability for bugs to tunnel through it and potentially nest. So you need to take some extra precautions. Things like, in my case, I added that two by two pressure treated bottom, and I'm also using a bug screen. So I'm gonna really go to the nth degree to make sure I don't get bugs up into my assembly. Had I had comfort board on the outside, I would have probably still taken some bug precautions, but I wouldn't have been as worried about it. There's pros and cons to both. Now let's look at pricing on this assembly. As I mentioned earlier, $4.05 per square foot, which is actually about 30% less than that last assembly. But again, I like it because I'm using two by four walls, which in my case, my original foundation at my house was set up for that. That made a lot of sense for me. You're gonna have to decide what's best for you. But this is a good assembly. I also like that I've got the standard zip sheathing, which is gonna give me both water and air resistance, a really tight exterior envelope. That's how I'm getting to those passive house numbers. 
But then I've got that thick blanket of insulation on the outside of the sheeting. Again, it makes it a little bit harder for siding. I've got to add battens and then my siding. Stay tuned for some future videos on that. But if you go to the standard Zip R, you'd have that insulation sandwiched. Now this is a good assembly and I really like this, but it is, in my opinion, a little bit better to go standard Zip and then put your insulation outboard of that. Nuances to everything, right? Let's talk cost too on the exterior insulation. The uh, two inch uh, Atlas Energy Shield Poly ISO, around $1.20 per square foot. The Rockwool Comfort Board that's two inch, slightly more expensive, around $1.25 per square foot. So it's really close in cost. There's not enough cost difference there to really make a difference. The difference for me was that I wanted that uh, aluminum facer on the outside of mine. Okay, next assembly, number nine in this kind of top 10 list that I've assembled. Now check this out. We're actually going to two by eight studs. That is a thick stud bay that we can put a lot of insulation on. But again, we really wanna have some exterior insulation. So on this one, we're talking about zip system sheathing of at least R3, but again, you could bump it up to R6, R9, or R12. Now if we did two by eights, with the R6, that's that one inch on the outside. And then we add a Rockwell R30 bat insulation on the inside of that cavity. We're talking about an effective R value of 30 for that assembly. That is really good. And again, the thing I like about this, standard framing, really any framer can do it. And we don't have to use battens on the outside. Uh, or anything crazy or difficult when it comes to siding install. The siding install contractor can just show up. I still would recommend some kind of a gap between your siding, but I do like that we've got standard zip facing on the outside. It really makes it easy for a builder that has less experience or who's starting to do high performance construction. Okay, so cost $4.82 per square foot, a little bit more, about 20% more than our last assembly, that number eight that had the two by four. But again, real thick insulation at R30 in the cavity. Plus we've got all the, those thermal bridges taken care of with that R6 zip R on the outside. Okay, and our last assembly, the one that's gonna be the most efficient in the group, uh, and also probably the most expensive, is this one. Two by eight wall with plywood, real plywood on the outside. And then we're gonna to go to a fluid applied weather barrier on the outside. This is gonna allow us to get that same type of air tightness that we had with the Zip R, but we've got a continuous fluid applied on the outside. Big shout out to my friend Lou Varney, who did all these renderings for us. He even nailed the details of showing how you're gonna put uh, Prosco's joint and seam on all the seams of the plywood. You're also gonna detail all the nail heads with Prosco's joint and seam. And then this particular assembly here is showing Prosigo's R-Guard system, which you can spray or roll apply. Now we've got Atlas Energy Shield on the outside here. You could also flip this out with comfort board depending on which part of the country you're in. And again, if you're in the south where it's okay to have a zero perm on the outside, we're gonna do two layers of Atlas Energy Shield. If you're in the north, you might wanna flip that out with Rockwell comfort board. Okay, so assembly number 10, this is the top one. 2 by 8 with plywood, Prosigo R-Guard, 3 inches of polyiso in 2 inch and a half layers. And remember, you want to offset that polyiso at the seams, because anytime you have the seam that comes together, you're going to have a little bit of shrinkage in that foam over time, which means you're going to have less R value there. If we overlap those seams, we won't have that problem. You could also use comfort board there. And comfort board, by the way, won't shrink over time like uh, exterior foam will. But check this out, an effective R value of the opaque assembly, meaning the whole wall, including studs and headers, that sort of thing, 45, R45. This is a bomber assembly, really thick insulation value there. It is more expensive though. This is our top one when it comes to cost, $7.13 per square foot at about 50% more, 48% more than that previous assembly. Uh, using two by eights and zip R6. Guys, a lot to think about. I gave you a lot of info here. The bottom line is there's a lot you can do with standard stick framing, 
by using some exterior insulation. And that's really the point I wanted to make here was if you choose your assembly wisely, if you frame it well, if you do the air tightness details well, we can get a really high performing house just like I'm building for my family. And in fact, you can get it to passive house standards without having to do anything super Herculean in terms of walls. We don't have to go to uh, additional alternative insulation styles or additional building materials. We can use what God's given us in North America, which is trees that grow, they sequester carbon, we cut them down and then they grow back up and in 20 years we can cut them again. That's what I like about these assemblies. In North America, we've been building with wood for hundreds of years. It's a renewable resource, we have lots of it, and it's got a lot of benefits. Guys, big thanks again to my friend Lou who did all these renderings for me. Go give him some love on Instagram, he did a great job on this. I'll put all these assemblies, uh, the costs, all these things that, that I talked about today in the show notes below, so check that out. And I do wanna say a big thanks to Andrew on my team who spent a bunch of time putting all this together for me. He's recently been added to kind of my research arm of Build Productions, and man, these last two videos, he did a ton of research to put all this together. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. And oh, by the way, we've got new content every day of the work week over on buildshownetwork.com. So go check that out as well. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.